Welcome to Nanda Dipai Hospital. It is center for surgical excellence. We also train our colleagues in different ophthalmic surgeries. In this video, I'll be dealing with a case of small pupil where I have planned a toric aisle insertion. So I'm going to use the BHEX 2.0, which is a pupil expansion device by Dr. Suen Bhattacharji. It's an excellent tool to have in your OR. So this is a small pupil. Patient has a shallow anterior chamber as well. This is a diabetic patient and laser has been already done for the retina. After initial incision, I have used Hylucoat to make sure the endothelium is uh, very well protected and this is the BHEX 2.0. So it is thicker than the previous version and stouter. So uh, you can see that I have inserted it in the anterior chamber and while inserting these flanges, make sure that alternate flanges are above the iris and make sure that uh, the it hooks the iris as you insert on both sides. I am holding the eyelet at of the center and the uh, other two eyelets go under the iris. So I have inserted the first two flanges right from the main incision and the third flange I am going to insert sub incisionally uh, using the left side incision and watching very carefully that uh, the flanges go under the iris there and then using Sinsky, I am centering this B hex so that when I am doing cataplexis, the central area of uh, the uh, lens is exposed. I am going to use the Haldipurkas cross-section cataplexis forceps and after making the initial nick, you can see that I am extended it till the area of the pupil. So, usually this uh, pupil expansion device uh, makes the pupil around 5.2 to 5.5 millimeter. So uh, we have to make sure that the rexis stays along the border of the pupil when we are using this pupil expansion device. This will retain the pupil size so that during the surgery it doesn't come down. Watch the careful hydrodissection. So, I am making sure that while I am injecting the fluid, it has to be minimal in multiple quadrants so the iris doesn't prolapse. So, using B hex ring will not prevent iris prolapse if you do overzealous hydrodissection. Now, here the patient is diabetic, and initially I tried to make the half trench and then do the chopping, but uh, as you can see, that probably I didn't achieve the adequate depth with the phaco tip and that's why it's not uh, dividing uh, completely. So now I shift to trench divide technique. We must master this uh, technique of trench and divide, uh, making sure that I have got a deep trench and my chopper that is a Patwadan 1.5 mm chopper. You can see the orientation of chopper in that uh, groove is horizontal. So uh, that makes uh, the division bit easier because in these kind of cheesy cataracts you tend to cheese wire the if you hold a chopper vertically it cheese wires through the nucleus and you don't get a proper division and make sure that you have adequate depth of the trench and that is something you have to focus on and uh, make sure that you have got complete divisions but many times in this uh, soft but kind of mushy or gluey cataracts it's uh, difficult uh, once you feel that you have achieved the division, uh, in this case, I still continue to do a little bit of deeper trenching so that I've got a division there. And once I feel that at least one piece is separated from the rest, I can then pull out. So here I'm using quadrant removal mode, high vacuum, it's on linear mode so that I can pull out uh, these soft uh, pieces which I have made. So you can see my bevel is sideways. Uh, I'm attacking the anterior part of the nucleus so it tumbles and comes to the center and once one piece comes out usually in this soft cat track the other pieces will follow and uh, I hardly require any phaco energy here mostly it is a phaco aspiration which uh, kind of uh, partially emulsifies but uh, it aspirates out this uh, soft nucleus. The anterior chamber is uh, shallow and uh, that's why you can see that uh, these small pupil cases with shallow anterior chamber, I make sure that my PECO handpiece doesn't move a lot 
in the anterior chamber because if you try to move it a lot in the anterior chamber the anterior chamber fluctuations usually increase uh, for cortex aspiration make sure that you remove the cortex from all areas and if you have used a b hex ring uh, and you want to see a particular corner if you have left some cortex there you can also pull or push the pupil around using this uh, b hex uh, ring so uh, with Sinsky, you can just stuck on this uh, B hex and push to the periphery and just check if you are uh, not sure if the cortex is removed completely. Now, while injecting the ILI, make sure that the haptics do not da drag this uh, B hex uh, along with it. So sometimes, if you it drags it, it goes into the bag and you have to then release it and uh, take it out. So you can see that the IL is now in the bag and. Uh, what I do for this toric IL cases in small pupil is that I first place the IL in the bag. I make sure that it's uh, properly aligned in the bag. And then I remove the OVD from the bag as well as from anterior chamber. So I remove all the dispersive OVD and, uh, from the anterior chamber and cohesive OVD from the bag there. And once I remove uh, the OVD, what I do is that I uh, align the IOL along the axis marks where I want to place the IOL and uh, once I'm sure that entirely OVD is out and the uh, uh, bag at uh, the IOL is in the proper position in the bag I then inject uh, cohesive OVD in the anterior chamber only so this cohesive OVD which uh, I will inject after aligning doesn't go inside the bag so that's the trick here so now the OVD is out uh, completely from the bag and now I am injecting a little bit of cohesive OVD in the anterior chamber only. Uh, this helps me in removal of the B-hex. Of course, you can remove the B-hex uh, under hydro as well. So you can use the irrigation cannula and then remove. But I generally prefer this because uh, when you do hydro removal, sometimes the iris follows and comes into the uh, main incision uh, along with the B-hex, which uh, I generally don't like. So this is a more controlled way to remove the BHEX device. And once that is done, I just uh, just few seconds to remove the cohesive OVD from the anterior chamber there. So as I don't disturb the IOL, uh, I assume that the IOL stays at its place. And this way I achieve quite accurate uh, positioning of the IOL in uh, the small pupil cases. For more such videos and more tips and tricks, do subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you.